the foundation of successful gardening and indeed all crop production is soil. Whenever and wherever soil fertility has been depleted, entire civilizations have crumbled because they could no longer feed themselves. What exactly is soil? Soil is actually the top layer of the earth crust where plants go. It consists of minerals, air, water, and organic matter. Now, the organic matter is what most of the plant nutrient is found in, right? The air, plants need air, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, the minerals, you get the minerals from the sand, silt, and clay, or so forth. Those are what the minerals within the soil um, come from, right? And water, the source of the water is either rainfall or from the top. Plants need water in order to, trans in order to break down these nutrients. For especially those nutrients that are very compact within the soil. The water, what the water actually does is to break, up, break it up, right? So it's more accessible to the plant. Air is all around us, right? But within the soil, it's very ideal for a soil to be what we call porosity, right? It's basically some tiny holes between the soil particles. So this is where the air would actually um, go through. So therefore, the, the plant root itself will be able to access this air to get um, oxygen and carbon dioxide and so forth because plants need them in order to make their own food. There are also other living things within the soil. These can include fungus, bacteria, millipedes, earthworms. Ideally for a soil to be perfect for plant growth. Whenever plowing the soil, the presence of earthworms should be in it because it triggers the amount of level of organic matter that the soil consists of. Right, so apart from just the air and the nutrient and so forth, we also have living things within the soil. Just to look over here, um, we have some samples of different soils that exist here um, in Jamaica. Right, here we have clay, sandy soil, silt, and what we call loam. All of them possess different characteristics. There are also certain soils that are whitish or yellowish in color. Well, those is high in what we call a calcium, which is now mostly marl soils. Um, here in Jamaica, those are found in, in, in mostly the coastal areas. Clay soil is one that have low porosity. The more, amount of air it holds is very low, right? You have little to none because the particles are so compact together. And one way to determine if the type of soil that you have is clay is to basically just squeeze it between your hands and roll it. If you release it and it's still compact, then it's a clay soil, right? Let's just move on. Here we have a sandy soil. Now, the difference with the clay and the sand here is that the clay holds a lot of water. The sandy soil holds little to none. If you actually just look at it, it's very loose, right? If you roll it together, if you squeeze it upon release, it shivers. Just let us look now at the silt. One thing with the silt, the silt particles are much smaller than that of the clay or the sandy soil. The silt is more like a powdery. If we look here, it's more powdery. If you're wet, if it's wet, it won't, it won't stick together as, it, as in the clay and it won't crumble as in the, 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 the sandy soil, right? So the silt itself is very powdery. And this is what one of the factors with it, it's not too ideal for, for, for plant growth. Mark you, it's easier to grow the plant in the silt than the, the, the sandy soil and the clay. Right? Because the, the proportion of clay and air mixture will be different. But let me introduce you to the perfect, what we call the perfect soil, which is one that is known as loam. Right? So this is, is an equal proportion, equal mixture of sand silt and clay. This is what is known as the loam. It won't stick together, it won't crumble when released, and it, don't, it doesn't, it's not like it's not in a powder form, and it doesn't hold as much water as the clay would do. In doing a backyard garden, you want to ensure that you have a soil that is very high in organic matter, or what we, know, what it, what we normally call the humus content, right? For the humus, it's, the, it's that top layer of a soil, that dark layer 
if you have ever seen a pit or a, a, a pit that was dug, right? If you look at the different layer, the uppermost layer of that pit is, a, is that part that is dark. That's the humus. And the humus is actually um, decay particles from rotted trees or leaves and so forth. Now, these particles are broken down by those insects, those the living organisms within the soil, such as the millipedes and the earthworm. The humus is what the millipedes and the earthworm, when it breaks down these rotted plants or, or leaves falling from it. So that's what we call the humus. So you want a soil that is very high in that, right? Normally, your loam soil is very ideal for um, backyard gardening because the loam, as I said, the loam is very rich in organic matter. It's ideal, it, it doesn't have that sort of too much porosity, right? Therefore, it holds adequate amount of water for the plant. The, the loam itself is ideal for doing backyard gardening for the plant growth, whether in containers or out in the field. There are three main nutrients that the plant needs to grow. One is nitrogen, two phosphorus, and three potassium. So those are the major nutrients. Apart from those, they need micronutrients such as the calcium and magnesium and so forth. Right? But in order to know what nutrient it's, is available within your soil, I recommend that you get your soil tested by the Rural Physical Planning Division of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Right? That testing will not only tell you um, the level of nutrients or the type of nutrients that is in the soil, but it also will tell you the porosity of the soil and so forth. Right? It also gives you an idea or a recommendation on the type of nutrients to be added. Now this is a healthy plant that shows good um, nitrogenous features. Right? Because if you look at the leaves, it's well have a dark greenish color, which is ideal. Most crops should look like this. If you see the leaves start to become pale yellow, it's, 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 it's nitrogen, lack of nitrogen would be responsible for that. So if, there, if, if no treatment is done, what will happen, the leaves will just eventually dry down and the plant die. Right, so this is, this is an ideal plant to show this plant is not lacking in nitrogen. The potassium gives it that vigor to produce a strong flower, a strong fruit production. So if a plant is lacking in potassium, most times the flower may or may not come out. Or if it does, it eventually will fall, right? And the fruit production will be slow and, 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 and it's very slow. So you won't get an ideal production as it relates to fruits from the plant if it's lacking in that. Now phosphorus is good for root development of the plants. The phosphorus triggers give the plant that vigor so enable it to take up the relevant nutrients. So the root loca location of the root will be actually in the soil here. So it, it's where all that phosphorus is located or it is used up. So within, within the, the root system of the plant. So it encourages, it encourages the anchorage of the plant and also the nutrient uptake. All of these nutrients are found within the soil. And if you, have, if you have done a soil test or if you do a soil test and it's not present, right, the soil test would recommend the type of nutrient and the amount that should be added within the soil. But it must be noted that um, nitrogen though, ni most nitrogen is found within the atmosphere, the air, right? So, if, so most times when nitrogen reaches to the plant, it's through heavy rainfall, thunderstorms and so forth. And once it reaches to the soil, there are some what we call them, nitrogenous bacteria within the soil that convert the nitrogen in a form that the plant can easily absorb it and make use of it. The potassium and the phosphorus is normally found within the soil from rotted plants when it's breaking down. It's 